All right, we're going to kick off our sports day powered by the Dallas Morning News qualifying day press conference. We've got our second place qualifier, Ryan Blaney. Uh, Ryan's uh, last lap time, 27.270 seconds at 190.020 miles per hour, 198.020 miles per hour. Uh, Ryan, just talk about your, your going through your lap, and I know this is your second, uh, second place qualifying effort. You also had that at Phoenix this year. Yeah, I thought um, we got better and better each run, which is always nice. Uh, you always want to get faster, and we did that. Um, I think we've done that very well this year compared to last year. I feel like we've uh, gotten a lot better at that. That was something we wanted to improve on. I feel like a lot of times last year we would uh, be really good in the first round and then not make the right adjustments or not go enough uh, to, to keep progressing up positions throughout the, throughout the sessions. I feel like we've done a really good job at that this year. So. Uh, that's something to be proud of, but uh, I thought I thought we had it. I thought it was a pretty good lap. I got a little tight in three and four, and and that probably gave it away. But uh, I heard you get a shotgun when you get the pull here, so I was pretty mad I didn't get that. But um, definitely something to look forward to. Okay, questions for Ryan? Just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you. This may be really quick. Anything for Ryan? And no Dale questions? Uh, All right. Jerry, Jerry, microphone to Jerry, please. <laughs> Did you, Jerry Jordan, uh, kicking the tires on net, PRN. Do you have anything else out there? I mean, what was it like going in there at, the, at those speeds? Yeah, the track's come a long way uh, since we got on it at 11 a.m. this morning. It's um, the first, first hour or so, it was pretty sketchy, uh, for sure, getting into turn one. Uh, turn one's been pretty slick all day. Three and fours actually had a lot of grip. Uh, it's been surprising how much throttle we can carry over there uh, in both cars, in the Cup cars and Xfinity cars. But um, it, it's definitely come a long way. But you know, you can always do stuff better. Like I said, if we would have freed up a little bit more last run, we might have been able to get it. But four cars really fast all session. But um, something you put in your notes for uh, fall race. So. Any other questions for Ryan? Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Good, thanks. Okay, we're joined in the media center by our pole sitter for the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500, Kevin Harvick. Uh, Kevin's uh, lap 27.217 seconds at 198.405 miles per hour. It's his 19th career pole in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series, but first ever at Texas Motor Speedway. Kevin, take us through the uh, the qualifying lap and uh, just talk about winning your first shotgun down here too. Yeah, it's been an, an eventful day. Just um, really just a lot of unknowns. The racetrack has, has rubbered in nice. It's just, um, you know, you have such a short amount of time to, to go out and figure out where you need your car and what you need to do. And, and my guys did a good job of having the car really good when we got here. And really it was just about, um, you know, me getting in a rhythm. The car was a lot faster than, than me and I didn't, didn't want to make a mistake and, and tear it up. So um, they did a great job. And you know, I think uh, running the Xfinity car was definitely a, a benefit today just because the track and the, and the entrances and exits to the corners um, you know, changed and widened out. So I think that's going to be the story of the weekend, uh, the progression of, of the track and the cars and, and where all that goes. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, practice and, and racing tomorrow and, and hopefully having a good day on Sunday. So it's going to be, you know, there's, there's going to be still going to be a lot of track position uh, to be played. That first pit stall is a, is a, is a big advantage. And, and I think, uh, you know, for us, that's that's going to be good to have. But just really proud of uh, you know everybody on our on our Jimmy John's Ford for uh, fast cars. Okay, we're going to go to Drew, and if you have a question, raise your hand. Kevin Drew Davidson, Forward Star Telegram. Do you feel like the pole position, your first one here, can lead to your first win? And, and kind of how frustrating has it been not winning here, but running so good? Yeah, I mean, this is one of I think three tracks, four tracks, um, you know, that hadn't won out on the whole circuit. So it's been, um, you know, it's been a racetrack that's been really good for me. I think I've won six or seven um, Xfinity races and truck races, and, and you know that side of it's been good. And we've run well since I've been at Stewart Haas. It wasn't our strength, uh, I guess you could say, uh, at RCR. But you know, I think since we've been here, we've we've qualified well and, and raced well, and and. You know, I think as uh, it's like I told Eddie last night, I said you finally got rid of that crappy asphalt, so hopefully I have a better chance now. All right, Bob. Uh, Bob Hockris, ESPN. There were nine hey, Bob. Hey, there were nine cars that didn't get through uh, tech. Is, is that a, a big deal? Does it matter, you know, 
when some of the stars uh, don't make a lap? Well, I don't promote races. I just drive my car. You know, I think as, um, you know, I, I, I think that would be a better question for, for Eddie. You know, I think, is that a big deal? You know, I think um, NASCAR has been pretty clear on, you know, where the progression of, of the inspection process was going to go. And, and last week was the beginning of, you know, harsher inspection. And, and uh, you know, he had to have everything straight by last week. And, and you know, this is the second week. So it's, um, it's a process. I think everybody in the garage supports the inspection process to, uh, to be consistent and thorough and um, not a moving target. And I think it's taken us a long time to, you know, to get to this point and rein everything in. I know for us it's been, you know, I think we're on our third generation of car and we're, we're seven weeks into the season. So, um, you know, I think that is just understanding the process. And as long as it's consistent and the process is the same all year, I don't think anybody will have a problem with it. I think if the process changes and this starts to get by and that guy starts to get by with that, as long as that doesn't happen and the consistency stays, I think, this will become less and less of a story. Okay, we'll go right back over here and then Lee. Uh, Ryan O'Hara, race chaser online at the Performance Motorsports Network. Uh, I talked to Matt Kenseth. He said that turns one and two were the hardest um, throughout the practice today. We saw a number of guys go to backup cars. Um, what were your thoughts on the on the difficulties of the surface? Yeah, it's definitely the you know the definitely the most difficult part of the racetrack. But I think um, you know that's that's what everybody was looking for was something that was challenging. Uh, it's very hard when you get into turn one because you're so used to the way the corner used to be. It's very hard to kind of pick up your reference points because the bottom is so far down there and you're so far, um, you know, out on the entrance to the corner and you got to, you, you know, drive straight down the racetrack. So it's hard to get your reference points and everything situated in a couple hours. Um, so hopefully that, that gets better as, as the weekend goes. But, you know, the, the treacherous part right now is just getting out of the groove. And, you know, if we had the, if we had the tire dragon um, tractor and stuff uh, still hooked up, I would suggest to hook it up and, and, and put it out of the groove and, and just follow that, that groove that we've put down because it was a huge help. They put a lot of effort into preparing the racetrack, and the, the part that was prepared was, was, was very good. It's just the inside and the outside of that groove is, is very dirty, and you can't get everything off the racetrack or out of the pores of the racetrack until the cars come and suck them all out going 200 miles an hour. So it's, um, you know, having some of that, having that rubber drug around the racetrack would be a huge help for the second groove if uh, there's nothing going on tonight. I'm sure we're going to be shooting fireworks and having a big party out there, so you never know. All right, Lee. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. I'm curious about you talking about different generations of cars because first three races, you were just so badass fast and until you had the wreck at Las Vegas, I mean, you look like you would be one of the contenders early on, and then the last couple of races, it just, for the speed, just didn't seem to be there for whatever reason. Can you kind of address um, just the high and low that you've experienced over the first six Yeah, races? speed hasn't been our problem. You know, Martinsville, we were off. California, I crashed on the first lap. Um, had the nose knocked in, came back from two laps and finished 13th. So, you know, it's... Um, I, the speed of the car was was there was there at California and we qualified well and did all the things we needed to and Martinsville was really the the only place we were off but um, that was really more of a structural thing than it was anything it was just kind of an unorganized mess there for the whole weekend but you know I think the the speed of the race cars has been where it needs to be and you know I think it's just been circumstances that we've had stuff torn up and California we smashed the nose in it on the car on lap zero coming to the green flag and. Uh, blew the tire at Vegas and crashed at Daytona and, you know, the pit road speeding penalty at Atlanta. So it's really just kind of chugging away through those types of things and not letting them drag you down and, and um, you know, keeping everybody focused. And, and I think everybody's done a good job, as you can see. The, the cars still have speed and everybody's coming to the racetrack and, you know, kind of forgetting everything. And, and eventually you'll get the flow of things and, and you'll start knocking those finishes off. But you got to keep the cars uh, with with the speed in it, so you know the only the only place I would say we needed to get better was was Martinsville, but everywhere else we've we've been plenty good to to contend in the top five and and up front, you know, for the for the for the speed of the car. Jim, Jim Mutter, Motorsport.com. When Clint was in here earlier today, he said that it seems in his as he looks back in his NASCAR career that everything he's learned driving in NASCAR, he's basically learned from you, whether it was at when you started at RCR and now that you're at SHR. I know you were high on his um, 
move to SHR, are you surprised at all at how quickly he's fit in and adapted? No. Yeah, I think that was the best thing that, that um, I was, the most exciting thing to me was the fact that, that I knew Clint, I knew Clint could drive the car, I knew we could work together as, as teammates and, and we were going to communicate and, and our teams, you know, have worked together from the fact that Mike was our engineer on our car. So there was a lot of things there that, that I felt like were going to be strong. Our cars were put together um, in the shop, you know, and managed by the same people. So, um, you know, there's just a, there was a lot of learning curve there that you didn't have to learn. And, you know, I know how motivated Clint is, and I know uh, that, you know, I watched him drive his first stock car at, at RCR. You know, and, and from that point on, he progressively, you know, learned and listened and, and brought a lot to the table as, as a driver and, and communicated. And, and it's always been, it's always been really good and, and we're good friends. And, and that's, um, that's something that you can't really buy. Um, you either get along with somebody or you don't and you communicate and you drive like them or you don't. Um, so, you know, those are things that, that, that we don't worry about. We just talk about our cars and he gets back in and drives his, I drive mine, we talk about it some more and the teams uh, do a good job. So it's been, it's been refreshing and fun to, you know, to, to have him there and, and, and progress things. Anything else for Kevin? Thank you. Yep, thank you guys.